Hi everyone, today's video I've got five budget meta decks for you. When you look at the current meta, you can look at certain decks like Ors Off Bats that has up to 40 rares in as the average deck, Mono Black and everything from 21 to 30 rares in, you've got Selesnia, Boros, all these meta decks can have 25, 30, 35 rares in. Now these five budget meta decks that I've got for you today, the most rares in one of these decks is 13 and it is going down to as little as under 10 rares rares. These decks, I've sourced them across Untapped GG and I've looked on Etherhub to find the best decks with good percentages, anything from 60 to 70% over a, you know, a fair amount of games, and these have been getting results. So if you're looking, you're a budget player, or you haven't got many wildcards, these could be good to seek into. These will all have some crossover cards as well, and majority of the rares in some of these decks as well that I've got for you today are in the lands. So obviously we know lands are the best things to craft for a budget player. First things you really want to craft because you can use them across multiple decks while still having majority of the main board in common and uncommon cards. So if it's your first time here today, I'm Matt from Total MTG. Welcome to the channel. If you enjoy budget content and you enjoy lots of arena content and everything like that, then please hit that subscribe button if you enjoy it today giving the video a big thumbs up really really does help and of course if you can watch till the end i know a lot of you just come here you just want the deck list which is fair enough if that's all you want to do they'll be down in the um, description of course but if you could just uh, watch it for uh, as long as you can that would really appreciate and um, yeah show some love but without further ado let's get on to the first deck so the first deck we have here is a 13 rare is it pirates deck now, like I said, in the majority of these decks, the rares are in the lands here. So this has an artifact theme to the deck. It's really cool. I crafted myself. I was missing like a couple of uncommon cards, like a couple of case and a couple of zoetic. Now, I am actually really struggling this um, current season with uncommons and commons, just for me, probably because I craft so many budget decks that I try to, you know, have a proportion of rares left. But I do have a lot of the good lands. Now, as you can see, with, out of these 13 rares... We have Myrix in there, uh, which is a really good land that can make a artifact token as well. It makes those toxic mites. We have a couple of Cavern of Souls because we're playing like a tribal deck. So Pirates in there, good against control decks. That's in there as a two of as well. Thundering Falls is just a single of. Um, and then we've got a single Spire Buff Canal and Shivan Reef. Now, I'm giving to you these decks exactly as I found them. I really don't think if you've got spare rares or more of these lands, changing these is not going to, you know, it's only going to enhance the deck even more. But like I said, they were getting between 60 plus percent, all of these decks I'm showing you today, and they've been getting ready as they are. So as 13 rares, this has worked very well. But if you've got the extra rare lands, you can just straight away just put them in. So this is a pirate deck. And then making artifacts into creatures and stuff like that. So it's actually quite it's quite an interesting build. And I've played around with this one, tested it, and I did find it, you know, quite fun to play with, I'm gonna say that. So if you like is it spell types of decks and artifact decks, this is possibly the deck that you want to craft. Now it has 21 creatures in total, uh six artifacts, eight enchantments, and it runs just the 22 lands with an average CMC of little as 1.8, so under two mana. We look at some of the cards, start off with the one drops. Case of the Filched Falcon is in there. So if you control three of my artifacts, you get to solve this, sacrifice it, put four one one counters on a non target artifact you control. So if you're making non token artifacts, like when the siren comes in, you're going to make a map token, you can then put the four four counters on that. It becomes a bird with flying, a four four flying, so really good evasion. And the case is actually, you know, a very strong turn one play to get down there if you haven't got your spyglass siren as well. Diamond pickaxe can come in. Indestructible artifact, which is nice, gives a quick creature plus one one when it attacks. You make a treasure token, so another way to make a potential target for the case of the filched falcon as well. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Um, so get that in there. Very good for that in conjunction. And you know, there's a lot of synergy in this deck. We now have Goblin Tomb Ranger as a two of. As long as you control an artifact, it gets plus one oh and haste. So potentially could come down after your spiral glass coming in turn two, attacking for two with haste as well, going in for a two two, which is pretty nice as well because you'd be attacking in the air with the spiral glass as well. So potentially turn two coming in for three damage. We then have the crewmate. So this enters the battlefield. Look at the top four cars, reveal an artifact or a pirate. So we've got a good chance of hitting something with this very good chance uh, put them into your hand um, and then put uh, the rest on the bottom of your library in any order and it's a 2-1 as well um, so it comes in 
That's a nice creature, but really in there for the effect. Captain Storm. Brilliant card. Very good. Whenever an artifact you control enters, put a 1-1 counter on it, so it doesn't even get it to end of turn. You get to build this up as big as you can. And it's a very good card. It does get killed straight away, so potentially play this um, if you've got an artifact to follow. is always nice, but it's still a very good, you know, aggressive turn two plays to get down there as well with the Gleaming Gear Drake as well. So this will make an artifact when it comes in. More targets for the case um, and triggering stuff that wants artifacts coming in. When you sacrifice an artifact, you get to put a 1 1 counter on it. So, making the clues or anything like that, um, we have clue tokens, we have map tokens that we can sacrifice. So, we can, you know, trigger this and get sacrificed in artifacts. This will be into an evasion flyer and um, just gets bigger and bigger. We then have one of the other rares in there Malcolm the Eyes, Flying Haste, cast a second spell each turn investigate so as you can see a lot of low mana spells here three mana is the highest we've got so we will be able to chain some spells off uh, with this on the field and then maybe triggering any one of these one drops coming in and then malcolm can make a this investigate token slick sequence and there's a two of two damage to any target if you've cast another spell this turn draw a card like i just previously said very low mana spell so quite easily to trigger that as well one of the other rares in the deck we have a three of this flying ward one kite sail larcenist it's a two three enters the, where each player clues up to one target artifact creates that playing controls for as long as you control it remains the artifact chosen permanent becomes treasure artifact and it becomes like a sack this artifact add one mana of any color as well so you get to choose it and then you know that controls and put a little thing on it as well which i think is pretty sweet uh, a little bit of control aspect to it and then one of my favorite cards in this deck is Zoetic Glyph for three mana. You get to enchant one of these treasure tokens, one of these map tokens, any artifact that you can make, and then turns into a big fire four. So potentially turn three, you've got your siren and you made your map token, preparing on curve, putting this three in. It obviously won't, will um, already be on the battlefield, so it's not going to be, you know, summon sickness. You'll be able to go in and start attacking in. And this is just an absolute house of a card for an uncommon. And when this is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you get to discover three as well. So exiling cards from Chopper Your and putting something in for three mana or less. Um, just a great uncommon card. Three mana makes it probably rightly costed, but yeah, all star of the deck without a doubt. Last card to talk about is Breaches. First strike, 3-3. Three, three. Good stats for a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, Goblin again. Pirate. We need these pirates. And whenever a pirate you control attacks, choose one that hasn't been chosen. To. So it's whenever a pirate attacks. Create that treasure token. Target creature can't block. So if there's something big there or opponents manage to get a flower in to stop one of ours, Malcolm's or anything, Gleaming's, anything like that. Or you get to exile the top card of live may play the card this turn. So all in all, a pirate trouble deck that works in an artifact synergy. And synergy is what this deck's all about, turning artifacts into creatures, sacking creatures, making bigger creatures as well. Really good deck, one that you'd have to take and learn and you know get to learn about the sequences if you're a newer player, but very fun deck and can turn out to be quite powerful. So now we're down to 12 rares and Dim Air Poison is still a very good meta deck and very, very budget as well. Now this is the 12 rare version. The whole main deck, apart from the lands, there is only one mythic rare in it. So one rare to craft in the main deck. Now, take away if you, you know, if you change the lands, you can make this extremely budget. You can actually make this zero rare. But then you lose the consistency of having the lands, and it's lands that bring consistency to be able to play your spells on turn and stuff like that. Powerful lands like Myrix that add to the poison, making toxic counters is obviously a very good rare for this deck. Uh, does run a Mistress Foundry as well. Um, personally, I think that's possibly one that you could drop if you wanted to um, to add in there because you really want to you know, win with the poison counters. Um, so you might be able to save yourself a rare there. But, you know, you really, you know, for the stats, I'm just saying copy them as they were underground river in there is a three of restless dark slick shores but good thing about crafting these like i say about all these decks you'll be able to use these in multiple different decks now 11 of the rares are in the land in this deck and like i said just one of the vraska if you've been playing for a while you know that poison you only have to do get that 10 poison damage in there so it's not like doing 20 damage to opponent and this will play like a control deck 
It's a deck that I loved. I played at my last standard showdown. I played a zero rare version because the idea of our standard showdown in my LGS was that everyone to give everyone a chance that it was zero rare. So you had to play budget, which was actually pretty decent because it gave everyone the same sort of chance. There wasn't, you know, some players who, who had four shieldreds and stuff like that and other people that couldn't. So it was a very interesting way to do it. And um, I would definitely suggest that to your LGSs if you can, just to, you know, try something different and have those sort of events um, it totally balanced the field out it was it was actually quite really fun as well so we have cut down we have lots of removal here cut down we have anointed with affliction that bases around uh, poison counters as well drown and anchor we have lots of proliferate cards in this deck uh, we also have Raskus Fall, this is just a really good card, even if you've got multiples on there to get that first poison counter on which you need sometime so four of these straight in there as well you then have some counter magic Bring to the end in, counter that spell because I was three or more counters. So you get to actually counter a spell for two mana if this is late game. So never a dead card. Like you know, sometimes we're paying the two in non poison decks. This card sometimes is as well. And then you've got reject perfection, imperfection, counter target spell if it's mana three or less, proliferate. Sometimes you get that, sometimes you don't. I, I found that generally you don't. So just in there is a two of in this deck, and I could probably see why. So lots of card draw. Infectious Inquiry, draw two cards, lose two life, but then opponent gets a poison counter. Distorted Curiosity that very, very quite often will cost you one mana to draw two cards late game. Great piece of card draw for this type of deck. It really, really is. Prologue, 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 Prologue to... I just, I, I'm not pronouncing that one. Someone's going to put it in the comments like they always do. Prologue to Phrysis, Phrysis. There you go. Uh, butcher the names. What's my name? Um, Seth from MTG Goldfish. Each opponent. I much love Seth. I love him. Uh, each opponent gets a poison counter and you get to draw a card as well. Augury goes through cards. Proliferate. Another proliferate card. So this deck works off proliferate and poison counters. And you really can get good wins. Quick quits as well. I found with this game. You really have. Last card. Vraska. Funny enough, I've always, when I've played this deck, I've never ever really got to play Mavraska because I'm winning the game already. So whether this, you know, like I said, don't change the decks if you don't want to, but I personally feel you could drop this Mythic Rare. Let me know what you think about that, but I'm not going to say drop it because I just think my personal choices, uh, per personal advice is that you could play with it if you've got it and let me know how often it does win you games in this sort of deck i'd be very interested to know but dear me poison very good deck very good as a budget deck and for 12 rares as well you get those good lands in and still you know for 12 rares is nothing and gets you a very competitive deck so we go to 10 rares now and it's a rakdos deck it's really mono red really but we do it runs a kalos cell sword now we've got two decks that run the Kalos. This is a very good card that you can cross over in a couple of decks. Now this is a 10 rare version with red and then we've got a Jund version after this that has you know, one less rare I think it is. Um, I think it does, might have the same. Um, and then basically what the deck is about is pumping up a creature and then you use the burn together where target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to any other target then you sacrifice it. Now I have lost to this deck so many times it, it is just a really, really good deck. If they don't beat you down with the creatures with this deck, um, the show off, which is just really good in mind. You play this in mono red, play this in gruel. It's a great craft. You'll be able to play this in multiple different decks. Uh, that will just beat you down. Uh, then it's got Ember Heart Challenger, which is one of the new mouse. Haste Prowess, good for getting, you know, if it's targeted with Valiant. Um, it's a prowess creature, 2-2 two, two for 2, and then just pumps up with all of the spells in here. Now, this runs 24 creatures and 12 instants, which, you know, quite surprised me. Um, but 16 non-creature spells in total. Some of these non-creature spells are like Mirren Bane Splitter, enters, attach it to the creature, gets plus 2, plus 0. Oh. When you're playing that with a with a slick shock in there, that gets plus two plus zero already from just you know with the cast of that, and then it's a three two, then it's a five two, and then you're pumping it even more with other cards. Felonous Rage gets plus two zero oh, haste. If it dies, you create a token. It just has so much this deck. Monstrous Rage for another plus two triggering with it plus four plus zero. Oh. So if you're putting this all on on your creatures and they get through, Heartfire Hero as well. When this dies, it deals damage equal to power to its opponent as well. So Callus just works so well with this. 
You deal damage equal to the power of any other target, then you sacrifice it. But if you sacrifice it with the hero, oh, it's just GG's. It's a it's a very tricky deck, and if you're playing against it, you need to kill these on site before they build up. Luckily, the burn together is sorcery. So if a deck's playing against it, you know, they can't just automatically just do it. It does run a couple of, of the Soul Forest Springs, you know, literally just to be able to play this card. But it's I've very, very rarely seen this played as an actual creature. It's always been just burned together and you're dead. That's literally what this deck does. But it can still go around like a mono red deck with the Swiss Spears, the Slick Shores and the Embers um, being pumped. You know, Blazing Crescendo with a massive plus three, plus one. When it's going on this, it's like plus five. I mean, the deck just builds up really, really quick and just wins out of nowhere. And the Callus is just a nice touch just to go, there, there you go. You might have blocked it, but now I sack it and I'm going to do the damage. My Heartfire is going to die and you're going to die as well. It's just a really, really cool deck. But let's get have a look at the other one, the other version of this. So with one less rare, it's the nine rare Jun version. Now what this does is added in green. So we have nine rares in total, um, but the, all these rares... Um, obviously um, are all in the lands we've got three forests in there Capuchin Forest four Copper Line Gorge uh, a Blooming Marsh a Sulphurus Springs now that is the rares the rest of this deck is um, all commons and uncommons it's, it's it's a really cool budget deck but uses the lands to get the consistency which is you know what you need so running on the same basis of the other card uh, the other deck sorry we've got Monastery it doesn't run um the flying one it doesn't run the flying one it's just completely gone out of my name just uh, the slingshot doesn't run that um but it runs for picket runner because you're using the green aspect of distributing three one one counters so you can build up your heart fires again felonous rage still in there plus two oh and it will leave a creature if it dies monstrous rage but then we're going in with some of these really good one drop green spells for the deck audacity enchanted cricket plus two and trample ability to draw a card and a couple of giant growth in there to give the plus three three and for one mana that is you know that's pretty sweet if you're building up your uh your heart fires or even just attacking in with your monastery swiss beers cacophony building that up sacking it dealing damage it's just got ways to win games it doesn't just rely on your color cell sword and the burn together to get in there and do it but for me it's another really good, consistent deck. It also runs our Allo Alchemist. This has Trample. When it becomes plotted, target creature gets plus three and two and Trample. So plot this turn two when it comes in. Give something else, plus three and plus two. Really good. And then itself is a three, two Trampler for two mana. And ways to pump up, you know, ways to protect, overprotect. Giving something indestructible, hexproof in case they do try to remove your creature before you can sack it or, you know, do something with Kala Sword. Uh, another aggressive deck, very much like the previous deck, but this is the Jun version. So if you do like playing green, you can play this. Um, rares, all in the land base again, but you'll be able to use these in multiple different decks, like I always say. Uh, but still the ability to make these decks zero rare decks if you you know if you really want to percentage won't be the, as same i don't think just because obviously rare lands give you the ability of consistency but it still gives you a very good version and ways if you haven't got all these rare lands to build up to eventually get them so you have the full version of the deck but let's get on to our last deck so the last deck, uh, like crossover of cards again, slick shot. You will be able to use monstrous spear, heart fear, higher, and monstrous rage. That is just one of the most common cards at the moment, which is why it's zooped up in price. Friends in uh, across the board in in USA have been telling me that this jumped. I don't know if it's still the same, but in the last couple of weeks, it was hitting seven dollars, seven dollars for a monstrous rage in paper for an uncommon. Because as you can see, there's so many different. Um, decks that this card can go into very aggro strategy deck which is really what stand is all about but this is a very you know mono red deck but slightly different to what you you would normally get now you've got five rares in this deck and they are two of the slick shot show offs and then you've got three of the squee dubious monarch coming in aggressive top end three mana 
makes an attacking goblin and is just a really good card that you can then play from the graveyard by exiling cards as well when you look at this like the cmc 1.5 still has 23 lands which i found quite interesting because we had a 1.8 that was recurring in 22 but this still likes um doing the 1.5 20 creatures 15 instants and only a couple of sorcery so very reactive deck playing at instant speed um i'm missing a few cards for this one i haven't managed to test this one but i'm going on other people's results uh, a couple of cards that I, I've read, never played. So playing cards like Rabbit Ignore, target creatures plus one, turn turn, deals damage equals power to target creature you don't control. And then Playful Shove, one damage to any target. That would hit off a few creatures, I suppose. I've seen a few um, artifact decks running the, is it Seguin? The 3 1 artifacts. And there's a few other one, you know, pick offs, maybe some tokens or, or stuff like that. Uh, that maybe this will hit but two mana draw a card and potentially kill sign but you can do it to the dome of you know your opponent as well so one damage to any target so it does have that effect in it as well and then you have like different spells dreadmore's ire the plus two two games trample when it deals combat damage destroy target artifact explosive derailment uh card yet again that i've never used so this is a deck that you know i would like to give a try i I'd probably just craft these couple of uncommons and then give this deck a try but if you do come back and let me know uh because like i said my uncommons they're very very five uncommons look at that oh, i'm suffering i'm suffering as a budget player um or you know budget content creator uh monastery swiftbeard has four in there monster trade phoenix chicken they're really good coming in aggressive but this is a slightly different take on mono red with a few different pump spells a few different cards and the main difference for me in the deck is running infantry. So this is a 1-2 with Trample. Whenever you cast instant sorcerers, you get to put a 1-1 one, one counter in it. This can build up really quick. Generally a card that I found. Opponents will always try and take down because it can just get out of hand with the, with the low costing of spells going in there, pumping up, and then the Trample. So a very, very good card. Um, I like this. But all in all, aggressive deck. There's a slightly different take on Mono Red, but was really smashing smashing getting really good high 60s percentage win rate so definitely a one to test out and let me know what you think of this different version of this i would i mean personally i'd love four of these in there just because i just think show off is just such a great card but yeah this is the deck as it is so let me know which of these decks you are going to play which ones are you going to try so hopefully with the crossover cards you might be able to build a couple of different decks here take them to the ladder and hopefully help you rank up and to come back and let me know which rank some of these decks for you if some of them didn't work as well for you come back and let me know that we all know arena can be you know tricky sometimes with the card draws and everything like that you know it just that but the matchmaking certain decks will sometimes put you against others although apparently it doesn't happen um in ranked conspiracy theories but we're not going to get onto that that would be a whole separate video <laughs> but, um, thanks for everyone for the support today if you want to pick up any of these decks in paper check out my sponsors down below the wonderful card market europe's greatest biggest card market um for buying cards online in the world it really is um and if you want to support me further i'd really appreciate you becoming a patreon uh lots of deck dot text on there I help people with decks and you know a good way for me to play some of the decks you want me to play and stuff like that or video ideas but yeah thanks for watching today's video you gotta take care and i will see you on the next one